Hello. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> when I was when I was walking up here, I, was ju I just thought that maybe the title of my presentation shall be uh, using the code to keep the B hag out of jail, right? I mean, but I'm here today to talk about what is happening in the Doxis universe. It's actually a very nice name. Thanks, thanks for that, Marine. So Doxis verse. Um, you know, because we ju we just realized that uh, the pace of innovation is impressive and we also need to change and we did so starting last year and I'm here actually it's so bright here so I'm uh, I'm I'm here to share with you some of the things that we have over the next 18 months so what we are going to do over the next 18 months to make sure that you are disrupting and not being disrupted um, so like last year I still have the you know this unglorious time slot that is just before lunch so I hope I can still grab your attention for the next 60 minutes I'm just kidding it's just 30 and um, starting with this code, because you know this year we've seen lots of crazy things happening. We all know now ChatGPT. We heard it from John. So, but let's talk about generative AI, which is a more generic way of putting it. Uh, this is impressive, right? So we really see how this can change the way we do business. Um, but we also started a, a evolution last year at SCR with Docs' intelligent content automation. So for those who were in Munich last year. Um, I've seen already some faces that were there last year. So we presented you guys with some ways we were about to level up our product or the next generation of our products. And today I'm really happy to continue doing so. Um, and there is a lot of content in here in this presentation, so uh, keep with me. So in the way how I would start this, so what I thought I would do is really looking at the code, right? So that we've just learned. So what are the product initiatives? meaning what we are doing in the product, so to make sure that we are addressing all of these issues, okay? So at the end of the presentation, hopefully everything is gonna make sense. So we have this puzzle, we've gotta fill in with seven pieces, and then at the end we are gonna summarize, okay? So the first you know, uh, uh, initiative is what we call human-centered design. And in the way how we define it, it's a way broader uh, spectrum, if you will, because human-centered design, if you know anything about design thinking, so it's, you know, for us especially, it's everything you know, from user experience, but also the customer experience. As you've heard, we've renamed uh, our professional service organization and customer support, so and now it's all, all about customer experience. Um, and in the way how we see it, it's everything that we do, how we deliver information for you, uh, the user experience as well, and uh, we are super excited about this topic. And to talk about one subset of it, which is really UX, UI initiatives, I'm super happy to welcome here on stage Vey Bavi, who is a, uh, our UX, UI designer, one of them. And she's going to walk us through the initiatives we have inside Doxis. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. So please welcome <laughs> Vey Bavi. Hi, everyone. Oof, so bright. You, you guys were right. It's very bright. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Douglas. And as you are already seeing, human-centric design is one of our most important initiatives. And that's exactly the reason why I want to start with this quote today. I actually read it in the very beginning of my career, and I think I am never going to forget it. Humans ignore the design that ignores humans. It makes sense, right? The most important factor is humans, people who use the product, you all. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. All of us in SER, we, we have a dream, you know, to transform Doxis and making it more and more usable and informative. We already believe that we offer products which are technically superior and strong. And you guys have always been trusting us with our solutions. But you know what? Now time has come to provide not just solutions, but easy solutions. We want to represent our super 
technology in a better way. And therefore, guys and girls, <laughs> we have started this journey of transformation. Let's address this today. Because some of you have already asked me this question already, and you have right to do so. Why? Why to change? We are already so comfortable with how everything works, and it works quite well. What's the need to change, and why to fix something which is not broken? But the point is, we are not fixing anything. We are improving it. We truly understand the fact that you have become very, very comfortable with the way, for example, WebCube works. You are habitual to it. But let me tell you one thing. Habituation, sometimes it's not very good. I'll tell you how. Let's, let's take the most basic example. So we all eat fruits almost every day, right? Let's consider apple. Oh, brightness again. <laughs> so let's consider apple. Some years back, we used to buy apples from the market, wash them, and eat them. Very simple. But then apple started coming up with this small sticker on it. And I will talk about myself here, and I'm sure you guys will agree that it used to be so frustrating that every time I am hungry, I have to pick up the apple, I have to look for the sticker, remove it, well, try to remove it, because sometimes it used to get stuck to my finger, and then I had to flick, 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 just to throw it away, and then wash the apple, and then apple used to be ready to be consumed. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> pain in the ass, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is. I mean, I'm sure you guys agree. <laughs> it's our I mean, sure, sure, uh, putting sticker on the apple was the necessary solution as it has all the details which help, and it really solves the problem of unorganized market. But look at what it brings, another problem. Anyway, that frustration went on and on for some days, months, then what happened? After eating so many apples, now it has become so natural to me that if I'm hungry, I pick up the apple from my kitchen, I look for the sticker, I try to remove it, I flick it multiple times, I throw it, I wash the apple, I eat the apple. I'm doing so many things, and yet I'm not frustrated. It's so natural to me, and it's so comfortable to eat the apple. You see, problem is still there, but we don't even notice it. Why? Because we are used to it. So this is a typical habituation problem. And we have to look beyond this problem. And looking beyond this, we realize that we need to improve. We want to solve your problems. We want to make your life better. And with this vision, we have started evolving. From the past one year, we have been working hard on uh, our products to make it happen. And today, I would like to show you the byproduct of all this hard work. Let's look at some of our UI initiatives. Let's start with small and simple, because sometimes smallest changes make the biggest differences. And because of that, we decided to work on some small places in our product where we think it might make a difference. Let's look at some of those examples. For example, the dialogue to add a new entity to the dashboard used to be this, 
which is now replaced by the simple panel with the flat list. As simple as that. Again, so the error for the passwords not matching used to pop up after you enter the password and hit OK, which is now replaced by the simple prompt which is shown while you enter the password. Very intuitive, isn't it? Right. So these are the kind of differences we want to make. And we, while we are not neglecting the small changes, we are super excited for the big ones. We are super excited for our vision and the big picture. So let's move to that now. Well, WebCube, which used to look like this before, now looks like this. And it's not a mock-up design anymore. It's already in the production. And if you log in to WebCube, you will be welcomed by this nice landing page. Moving on, this one is the quick action widget. This is used to access the actions which you are frequently using. This one is the e-file view, which is typically a workspace view, where you get to see all the important information about the workspace. And of course, it will help you to collaborate with all the aspects of this e-file. Next one is the search result page, where you get to see the search results along with the search dialogues, facets, filters, everything together. This one is the business studio, which John already mentioned. But for those of you who don't know what the business studio is, Douglas is going to speak about it in detail in a short while. So look forward to it. The dialog studio is where you define the folder structure. This one, again, is from business studio, where you define users and groups. This is our beloved mobile app. It's mobile cube, and these are the landing pages for light theme and the dark theme. Ha. Ah. So it, it's not working on all of this is not a cakewalk, to be honest. But standing here today and showing you all of our dreams coming true is making me immensely happy. And to be very honest, you guys have played a very important role in all of this, because the user tests which happen with you guys and the kind of feedback which we receive has always helped us. So I don't always have to mention this, but uh, whenever you guys have anything to talk to us, to suggest us, or give us any kind of feedback, please reach out to us. We will, of course, always be available for you. And similarly, we will keep contacting you to test our designs every now and then. Because you guys are truly the center of our universe. And with this is almost time for me to go. But I want to promise you all one thing, that we will keep focusing on you. And we will keep focusing on the constant learning while we continue this journey of transformation. Let's wake up every day with the energies to help each other in becoming better. Let's be open to changes. And let's hope that one day, Maybe, I say maybe, we get rid of this damn sticker on the app. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do you guys, how do you guys like it? Whoa, make some noise. You like it? <laughs> All right. So it's time to move on. We're going to segue here. Um, and we're going to fill our puzzle with our next product initiative. And we've, we've heard about it already. So John already spoiled it for me. So fast starters. Well, fast starters, the best way, you know, if I would make an analogy, what that is. So you know that we like food analogies. So last year, if you were in the summer, we used cakes, now apples, and now it comes another one. 
Um, you know, you're hungry, you come home, and we are all lazy to cook, I am, um, and you, you don't want to eat this frozen pizza in the fridge, right? So you want to keep your health, you know, up. And um, what if we would have a service for you that we deliver pre-cooked meals in front of your door? You don't, have, you, don't, you don't need to do anything, except warm it up. If you want, you can still put some pepper, you know, uh, everything that you like on top, and then you're good to go. So I just explained the concept behind fast starters. Um, fast starters, they're, they're supposed to be a catalog of content apps, and they work as simple as that. So it's one click, you just select from this menu of options, you import into the system, and you're ready to go. And we cover with that different, many different use cases. So insurance, collaboration, so you name it. There is really a bunch of uh, use cases that we currently cover today, and by the end of this year, we're going to have 30 different fast starters as part of our menu. Um, the beauty of it is that it's not just something that you import into the system. It's really industry best practices. Everything that we've learned over the last years, it's put it in here. Okay, so it's a common data layer, and that's really something that is going to help you to accelerate your time to, to time to value. So, moving on, the let's say complement of fast starters is Business Studio, as we we've seen already. So you can think of the kitchen where you warm up our pre-cooked meals, and it's a modern, good-looking kitchen. You know, this kitchen's with a aisle in the middle, in the, in the middle, so in a thermal mix on top. So it's very modern. Um, taught for citizen developers. And you know it's supposed to be very simple, so we don't want to make things complicated. So it's a really, really simple to use app. You should try it out. It, and also in our demos uh, uh, points, uh, it's already live. See it and give us feedback. So the next product initiative is what we call Composable AI. We've heard it several times already. It's not the first time we use this word. Uh, but we, we've seen th just this year, right? So the power of AI. And obviously, we need to bring this in the context of DOCSIS. And context is actually the very important thing, because even you know, this best of breed AI framework, frameworks out there, without context, they do nothing for you. And that's important to keep in mind. And I'm super thrilled to announce our new product we are releasing later this year and a beta releasing is coming soon. So DOCSIS Intelligent Document Understanding. So it's our next generation AI-powered information extraction platform. This is a game changer, because we are leveraging all of the best of breed for uh, AI providers for different use cases. We are putting this together, putting the context of your data to deliver the best results. And the best part of it is that it comes with predefined models for common use cases like invoice automation, order confirmation, and many others. So if you want to be part of the early adopt program, let us know. Keep in touch. We are happy to engage early on with customers. And one thing that I should mention about, th about this product, although it is cloud only, but it also works if you have Doxis on-prime. OK, so we, we are going to support a hybrid cloud model. So no worries if you don't want to move completely to the cloud. So, but this is a game changer, and we are super excited about this product. But that's not everything. We have an, an, another thing I would like to show you. And this is you know, how we can use Contextual AI and make your life easier. Uh, and here is just an example. So we are in, in WebCube. We are uploading three contracts. And we are, while we are doing this, we are going to create um, or upload the documents, and now comes the part that we need to fulfill the metadata. But now, as you can see there on the top corner on the right, we just click on this magic button, and we are extracting automatically the metadata for you. And here, we did it without any training. So just leveraging the best of breed AI frameworks out there. Okay? So this is just to show you the power of AI applied to your context. And this is what we are going to uh, hear from, from us over and over and over. But that's not everything. So tomorrow, Gregory and I, we're going to be here on stage, and we're going to talk only about AI. And the initiatives in boxes we have just about AI. So it's exciting. I hope to see you guys here again tomorrow. 
Uh, all right, let's breathe for a moment. We've seen four product initiatives, human-centered design, business studio, fast starters, and composable AI. And we still have three pieces of the puzzle left. So the next one, I'm going to give you a hint. So what do you think it is? So the product is called Docs Intelligent Content Automation. So what do you think it is? No? Content automation, OK. So <laughs> uh, all right, so content automation. Well, in a way, how we want to be seen is really so we are able to automate all of your processes that touch content. It could be an email, could be a document. There are many ways you can describe uh, unstructured content. Um, but let me show you an example of how we see the future. So in this, here, in this example here, we are adding a new equipment to our modern kitchen business studio. And he, through this equipment, you can connect to different leading apps like Salesforce, uh, many others, SAP, as an example here as well. And in this, in this case, we're telling Docsys, please connect with Salesforce. And, tell, and every time that a new account is created, please create a correspondent customer workspace in Docsys. And I also want to precisely say, what are the attributes that I want to map from one system to the other? So it's really simple. It's very intuitive. And every, everybody can do it. And the interesting part here is you can see you can define multiple actions, one after the other. So a string of actions, what should happen when an external event occurs outside Docsys. But the other way around is also true. So internal events in Docsys that trigger uh, external actions to other systems. So we are going to support two use cases. So it's a two-way two direction. So we believe this is, gonna, is, this is a ga game changer as well. Because it's not just about connecting with several different apps. It's how easy it is to connect with them. And speaking of integrations, so this is our next piece of the puzzle, expanded integrations. So just recently, we created or we brought, brought to the market these four new initiatives, oh, sorry, uh, four new integrations, Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain, Dynamics 365 Sales, SAP Success Factors, and S4 HANA Cloud. So we are keep growing our ecosystem of integrations. And you're going to see from, hear from us every quarter more and more integrations coming because we want to better support you in your, in your digital transformation. And I think having out-of-the-box integrations, well, it's all you need, isn't it? So um, in order to reduce the time to value. All right. So whew, we're coming to the end. And there is one piece of the puzzle left, and that is what we call multi-cloud ECM. So we are in a journey to become a cloud-first company. It doesn't mean cloud only. It's just cloud-first. So we prefer cloud, because there are many advantages of doing so. But we want to support you in the hybrid deployment as well, OK? Because we also understand that not everybody is ready to go completely to the cloud. So as we speak, uh, we are working on a new service cloud uh, named Doxys Cloud Services. So this service will allow us to bridge whatever Doxys deployment, cloud and off cloud, to our shared services. So it's going to be very easy for you to connect to the cloud, no matter which deployment you have. Um, this is, again, a very important initiative for us because we want to enable you. We want to be part of your journey into the cloud. So. Bridged, bridged by Doxys Cloud Management, extended by Doxys Cloud Services, integrated with our public cloud services. OK, AWS, Azure, so those are the main hyperscalers that we support. But that's not everything. So Doxys Cloud Management, as you can see here, it has different modules, one of them being what we call Cloud Launchpad. So Cloud Launchpad, that's what you see here, is going to enable you, is going to give you full transparency of users of your billing information, of your license information. And in the future, it's going to be enable you to create Docsys deployments in the cloud within the, in the hyperscaler of your choice and the region of your choice. Obviously, we need to support them. Uh, and you do this yourself. Self-service, 
and you create cloud environments for you and you manage them with full transparency, full visibility. So this is the future of Docs' cloud. All right. Uh, now our, our puzzle is complete, and I would like to summarize. So we've learned the code, right? We've, we've cracked the code. So pressures on time to value, we understand how important that is. And for that reason, we have created Fast Starters and Business Studio, our modern kitchen. Above everything we do, we care about you. It's really about human-centered design, uh, solving the right problems in the right way for you, or helping you, actually, uh, solving your own problems as well. Um, we are expanding our integrations, and that will help you as well with, with time to value, that will connect you uh, or provide you with the ability to integrate with multiple business apps in your digital transformation. Through AI, we're going to be able to you know, unlock your dark data, and we are going to see more about this tomorrow. Through automation, we can certainly you know, match the pace that you need uh, for your business. And then finally, you know, putting all of this together under a multi-cloud ECM strategy. That's the way moving forward. So I'm really happy about the future of Doxis. This is really the way how we see we can deliver not only the return on your investment, but also the return on your information. That has been our mission. And I hope you're excited about the future as much as we are. And uh, thanks for listening. And uh, so if you want to chat during lunch or throughout the event, I'm happy to chat with you. And uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>